Okay, in, in this video, I'm gonna be discussing the adequate written disclosure requirement uh, imposed on a patent application in order for a patent to, to issue. We've talked previously about the patent claims and how you go about interpreting the patent claims. Uh, the written disclosure is the actual description of the invention itself and how the invention actually works. And, uh, and it's a critical part of the patent document. So in order to, uh, in order for the uh, written disclosure for the specification of the patent to be adequate, there are three different requirements. The first of those is the enablement requirement, which says essentially that the disclosure has to enable a, again, person having ordinary skill in the art, a fozita to actually practice the patent in question. In other words, you have to tell the reader what it is that you've invented or discovered and how they can do it, right? You have to give them enough information that they can actually do what you've invented or described. Now that doesn't have to be enough information for a member of the general public. It only has to be enough information for someone who's actually familiar with the nature of the art in question, who actually practices within the field. You don't have to be redundant about it. You have to provide what will be new and helpful, new and critical for a, a person practicing in the particular field in question to do what it is the patent is disclosing and by extension, what it is the patent is claiming. Now in practice, this is a requirement arguably ob uh, observed at least somewhat in, in the breach. Um, as a practical matter, patent documents don't necessarily always disclose everything necessary to actually enable someone to practice the patent. And that's sort of a tightrope that the patent applicant is going to have to walk. In other words, you've got to disclose enough that you can plausibly argue that you've satisfied the enablement requirement, but you don't want to disclose too much. And in particular, if you're keeping some aspects of your invention or discovery as secrets rather than disclosing and trying to claim them. Uh, you obviously don't want to disclose those secrets or particular methods uh, of uh, achieving the results of the invention or discovery uh, in question, right? So uh, sort of a, a tightrope being walked by the patent applicant, as it were, uh, how much disclosure are we going to make uh, in service of enablement? And what, if anything, can or should we hold back uh, and still be able to receive patent protection? Okay. In addition, there is the written description requirement, which is simply that the uh, specification has to include a written description of the invention. This plays an important role in, uh, in the uh, patent application process and the ultimate grant of, of the patent, because of course that can take place over a considerable period of time. And presumably most inventors uh, aren't sitting on their laurels while they're applying for the patent. They're considering continuing to innovate in the field. They may come up with additional, um, additional knowledge while the patent is being prosecuted. The, the, the term for uh, the patent application processes is, is, is patent prosecution. Um, and we don't want patent applicants to be tacking on additional claims on, on the back end as they, they learn more. So the specification or the written description of the invention being claimed doesn't can't doesn't can't change over the course of the patent application process. In other words, the, the claims have to be based on the invention as initially disclosed, not the invention as subsequently developed. Uh, and this also ensures that it's actually the inventor who's uh, applying for the patent in question. In other words, that the invention is the product of, of the inventor uh, and that the inventor is actually the one who's disclosing the information to, to the patent office and by extension to, to the world. And then finally, we've got the best mode requirement, um, which in theory says that the uh, patent should disclose the best way of accomplishing the invention or discovery, but in practice is observed almost entirely in, in the breach. 
and uh, it's not actually considered, uh, generally speaking, necessary by the courts that or the patent office that the very best way of achieving the patent claims necessarily be dis specifically disclosed in, in the patent. So large, best, best mode requirement, largely a dead letter, uh, but uh, still there uh, as a requirement in, uh, in the patent act.